I'm professional artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to draw on a graphics tablet. For you beginners, I'll cover some of the basics of how a tablet works, and for you more experienced artists out there, I'll share some tips that'll show you how to make the most of your tablet. I'll demonstrate drawing on three different kinds of tablets. A basic drawing tablet without a screen, like the Wacom Intuos Pen & Touch here. A large tablet with a built-in screen, such as the Cintiq 27 QHD Touch. And finally, an all-in-one drawing tablet with a built-in computer, such as the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. Now, I am aware that not everyone has a Wacom brand drawing tablet, and that's okay. Many of these tips are going to be useful regardless of which kind of tablet you're using. Before we get started, I'll assume that you've already installed your tablet drivers before plugging the tablet into your computer. If you need help installing the drivers, or if your tablet isn't recognizing your pen, then you may need to troubleshoot. See my help videos in the video description down below if you still need help or contact the manufacturer of your tablet for tech support. I'll also assume that you've installed an art application on your computer that can recognize pen pressure. For a list of recommended free and paid art apps, look in the description of this video. So I'm gonna start with this basic tablet, the one without the screen that plugs in through USB to your laptop or your desktop computer. This is the Wacom Intuos Pen & Touch. It's a previous generation model, but it still has similar functions to the more current Intuos tablets. This type of tablet does not have a built-in screen, so you have to look up at your computer monitor to see what you're drawing. A lot of people think that sounds difficult, but you don't look down at your hand while using a mouse and you do just fine, right? It'll take a few weeks or a few months of practice, but most people are able to adjust to drawing on a tablet while looking up at a screen. If you're using a tablet with a screen, many of the tips I'm about to share will still apply to you too. You just have the added benefit of having a screen to draw directly onto. So let's talk about navigating with the pen. The pen moves your mouse cursor, but it does not push the cursor around like your mouse would. Instead, you're pointing to the location on your tablet where you want your cursor to point to on your screen. Your cursor is the tip of your pen, and the tablet surface is your screen. So if I want my cursor in the top left corner of my screen, I move the tip of my pen to the top left of my tablet. If your tablet is smaller or narrower than your computer monitor, which it very likely is, that's okay. With practice, you'll quickly adjust to the difference in scale or aspect ratio. So I'm gonna do a little bit of basic navigation here. I'm gonna hover my pen slightly above the surface of the tablet until the cursor begins to move. I can tap the pen tip down onto the tablet to perform a mouse click, or I can tap and hold the pen to the tablet surface and I can drag windows or move files around. That's a sustained mouse click. Now, if you're using multiple monitors, you may be having an issue where your tablet is working on the wrong monitor. You'll wanna go into your tablet properties. In this case, I'm using a Wacom tablet and that's in the Wacom tablet properties and I wanna change the mapping so I'm using the correct monitor. Let's go ahead and test our pen pressure now. We wanna test the pen pressure in an art application using a brush. I'm using Corel Painter. Try to find a brush that can sense pen pressure to control the brush size. Ink pens usually do the trick. Press very lightly and then use firmer pressure until you see a change. You may need to calibrate your pen to respond to the amount of pressure you use in the Wacom tablet properties. To find this, look in your control panel or search your computer for Wacom tablet properties. If you're using a non-Wacom tablet, you should have a tablet control panel too with very similar options. I press hard with my pen while drawing, so I set mine a notch towards firm. You can test the pressure in this control panel or jump back to your art application and try some more test strokes. You may also be able to control the sensitivity of the pen in your art application as well. The setting in the Wacom tablet properties is global and it affects all applications, while calibrating pen pressure within an application only affects that application. Personally, I find the global setting is good enough but there are a few brushes I use in Curl Painter that require some fine tuning of the pressure. I can do this in Curl Painter by going to General, Brush Calibration, enabling brush calibration, and then calibrating by clicking on the bottom right icon, and then drawing the kind of pressure that I want. You'll get different results depending on whether you press firmly, lightly, or use a mixture of both. It may take some back and forth, but try to find a pen pressure setting that feels the most natural. It will take some time to get used to drawing with the pen, so you can always come back to this setting later and fine tune it. You might also test a soft, semi-opaque brush, such as an airbrush, because the pen pressure can also control the opacity of the paint, as well as the flow of the paint in some art applications. You might also notice that there's buttons on your pen. Typically, most pens have two buttons. You can customize these buttons to do a number of things. I like to set mine to do right-click and resize my brush in Corel Painter. Now, please forgive me for not painting anything other than these amazing scribbles during this demonstration. I have many other videos you can check out that show complete digital paintings I've done. Now let's talk about gestures. Drawing naturally on a tablet takes practice, but it also relies heavily on using proper technique. 
I have a few videos you can watch that go into more detail, but let me say that the size of your tablet is going to affect the kinds of gestures you can make with your pen. Many of the techniques that artists use to freehand draw straight lines and smooth circles require a large area to gesture on. If I'm using a small tablet like the Intuos Pro here, I can only move my arm so much before I run off the tablet surface. So it's better to have a larger tablet, but you can still make great art on a small tablet as well. It just means you'll have to learn to draw using smaller gestures. Now I want to say a few words about positioning. Positioning is also very important to drawing naturally on a tablet. There's artists out there who will disagree with me on this, but in my opinion it's best to have your tablet and your body aligned horizontally with your monitor, meaning the tablet is not rotated at an angle and neither are you. It's also good to have the tablet right in front of your monitor rather than off to the side, but in some desk setups that's not possible, so let me say that it is possible to adapt to drawing on a tablet that's not at the same angle as your screen and is positioned off to one side, but it takes more effort for your brain to make that adjustment. I feel it's better to get the tablet to match the screen as closely as possible and then you won't have to worry about the additional strain on your hand-eye coordination. I have a keyboard tray which I can use to set my tablet on. However, the tablet's rather small so it could feel more comfortable to have it off to the side just a bit. That's going to throw off my brain, but I've learned to adapt to it. You'll have to try some different positions until you find one that works best for you. You can rest your hand on the tablet, only the pen tip can make a mark. Your fingers can rub against the tablet, and you can draw on it just like you would on paper. Some tablets can sense touch input, which can be used to zoom into your painting or perform other types of commands. If you're worried about the touch going off accidentally, you can toggle it on and off with either an express key or a switch on your tablet or within the Wacom tablet properties. Now let's talk about customizing your tablet. Many tablets are ambidextrous and can be used by left-handed artists. If we look in options in the Wacom tablet properties, we can adjust the pen pressure levels, we can turn Windows ink on and off, and we can also customize a lot of other features. As you can see, I'm able to customize each tablet and pen on my system. So those are the basics of working on a tablet without a built-in screen. Next, I'm going to talk about drawing on tablet with a built-in screen, but even if your tablet doesn't have a screen, stay tuned because I'll be sharing some tips that apply to all kinds of tablets. This is the Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD Touch. It's a drawing tablet with a built-in screen. While you have the advantage of not having to look at a separate screen while painting, you may find that there are some disadvantages to working on a screen, like fatigue from holding your arm up as opposed to resting it on the tablet surface, and your hand blocking your view of what you're drawing. Aside from that, drawing on a screen should feel as natural as drawing on paper. Again, as with the tablet without a screen, you can rest your hand on the screen, and if the tablet supports touch and you want to disable it, that's easy to do. There's actually a button on many of the Cintiqs up at the top that can turn touch on and off. First, I need to calibrate the position of my pen on the screen. This is different than calibrating pen pressure. Calibration makes sure the mouse cursor aligns with the tip of your pen. Some screen tablets have parallax, so you'll never be able to get the cursor and the pen tip perfectly aligned, but you can get it close. Don't worry because you'll probably be looking at your brush cursor while painting more than your pen tip. Just get it as close as possible. You can set the calibration in the Wacom tablet properties. Make sure that you're sitting centered to your screen and keep your pen upright or perpendicular to the flat surface of your screen to avoid offsetting the pen. Now let's do some test strokes on our screen tablet. Cintiqs are often larger as drawing tablets go, so you'll be able to make bigger, broader gestures while drawing. I can't speak for other brands of tablets, but a Wacom Cintiq does not need a screen protector. You can easily wipe off any fingerprints or dust, and I have a video with some tips about that that you can watch. These screens are meant to be drawn on with a pen, and normal use should not scratch the tablet. Now don't get me wrong, you need to be careful with your screen, but some of the reports of scratches on the screen turn out just to be oil from people's hands or residue from the pen tip rubbing against the screen. This can be easily wiped away with a soft, dry microfiber cloth. A Cintiq has a nice screen with mostly accurate color, so it's up to you if you have a reason for needing to buy and use a color calibrator. And the last type of tablet we'll talk about is the all-in-one tablet with the built-in computer. This is the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 16. There's not much to say about drawing tablet computers. They're basically a screen tablet with a computer inside. One of the key differences between a tablet computer and a screen tablet is that the tablet computer may be able to sense screen rotation, and the screen itself can be aligned to make it more comfortable to draw on. This can be useful for drawing in portrait orientation or tilting your canvas to make watercolor paint drip in Rebel 2. If you don't like it when the screen senses rotation, you can turn it off with a switch on the tablet or within Windows. Now let's talk about some extra features that you may or may not have. First, the eraser. If your pen has an eraser, you can flip it over and that should switch your art app to the eraser tool. This eraser can be disabled or programmed to do another function. You can also draw with the eraser end. 
Now let's talk about touch. Some tablets support touch input. Let's try turning touch on and we'll use it to navigate. I can use both the touch and the pen to create my artwork. I can tap with one finger to click or drag windows and files. There are some global gestures that you can use and customize in the Wacom tablet properties, but many art apps can use their own gestures as well. I can drag with two fingers to pan my page here in Photoshop. I can also pinch with two fingers to zoom in and out, and I can twist to rotate my canvas. Many tablets have express keys. Express keys are buttons on your tablet that can perform just about any command. They're most useful when assigned to commonly used functions such as undo and redo, hiding the application interface, and panning the view of your canvas, just to name a few. The more express keys you have, the more shortcuts you can program. There's also on-screen buttons you can program in the Wacom tablet properties to add even more commands. You can customize express keys for all apps or for specific apps using profiles. And you should back up your customizations to a file or the Wacom cloud for easy recovery should you ever need it. Now let's talk about brush expressions. Brush expressions can be used along with your pen if it supports brush expressions to do things like tilt your pen to get different marks. You can also rotate your pen to rotate flat brushes like palette knives if your pen supports it. Your digital art software also has to support the expressions as well. Now let's talk about the tablet surface and nib wear. Many Wacom tablets have tooth or a slight feeling of paper grain. It's not sticky or too slippery. That can't be said for some of the Wacom alternative tablets out there. So why is the tablet surface a feature? It's because this tooth feels more natural to draw on. It provides a bit of friction or resistance to the pen tip, the same kind of friction you'd expect from a pen on paper. This does cause the pen tips or nibs to wear down, but that's just a property of nature. Everything wears down when rubbing against something else because it creates heat. If the nib doesn't wear down, then the screen has to wear down. So which would you choose? It's a property of nature, not a conspiracy to get you to buy more nibs. And fortunately, your tablet probably came with some replacement nibs. In the Intuos, they're in a compartment on the back of the tablet that just slides up and they're hiding in there. And on the Wacom Cintiq, they are hiding inside of the pen holder here. Additional nibs can be ordered online and there are even felt tip nibs and other types of specialty nibs that can give your pen a different feel. Nibs can wear down quickly, but not if you use proper technique. For example, don't press so hard. If you're pressing down really hard to get pen pressure, maybe you need to calibrate your pen pressure to make it easier to get the stroke that you want. Another tip you can use to make your nibs last longer is to use your pen's eraser for repetitive tasks like blending and any strokes that don't require the accuracy of the pen tip. I have many more tips about saving your pen nibs in a video which I'll link to in the description of this video. And the last extra feature that I want to talk about is wireless. Some of the tablets without a screen can be connected wirelessly. Some tablets come with a wireless kit and some require the kit to be purchased separately. Although in my opinion, a USB connection is better because it's not susceptible to wireless interference or the signal getting blocked or lagging. So there you go, that should give you a good idea of how to draw on just about any drawing tablet. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more videos about digital art like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.